we've got ourselves this million dollar budget. And now we cannot rationalize this million dollar budget. So we're gonna have to arrest this guy today. Yeah, I saw this guy here slap that girl down here. But you know something? You got a criminal record, so I'm gonna arrest you because if I go after this guy here, this guy's gonna go on bail. There's no chance that this guy's gonna screw up. This guy's gonna go out, he's gonna show up the court when he's supposed to show up. He's gonna end up on abiding by his boundaries, abiding by his curfew. But you, you got nowhere to live. Or you got a little warp up there because we hit you, so I'm gonna arrest you. Why? Because I can get a conviction off you. You may not have been guilty of the crime you committed, but you will still get a criminal record because I'm gonna have you show up to court every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're gonna have you go see a psychiatrist and take whatsoever drugs prescribed by that psychiatrist. We're gonna have you stay within the boundaries of here and here, and not to have any contact directly or indirectly with anyone affiliated with this case. And like what happened to me on Saturday, I saw you on Tuesday, I had court. I took sick after four court days. I took hill and I couldn't make it to court. My back was gone. I got an assault the week before. I got the license plate of the individual. There was weaknesses until now the police did not charge the individual. Then I have another bouncer tell me that I can't speak on the public sidewalk no matter what you're doing. He took some things and threw it at me, hit me right in the side. So I turned around and called the police. The police said, well, we went down here and we spoke to them and they told us the story. Hold it. I was the victim. I am the one who they commit the crime against. So you went and speak to these people without even knowing who the assailant was, because you have no rights. Because you just to start to sell you. What are you saying? It's sick, it is. And I don't know, I can't leave Toronto because I've got four cases. And the first day I got arrested in Scarborough. From Scarborough I was shipped to 42 Living. The cops first said they were gonna drive into my mother's to go get my curtain and pick up my money. In turn, they drove me to the station because they saw I had a peace going on. From there, they hit me with breach of the peace. Even though I wasn't convicted of a crime, they said I breached the peace bond. Then from there, they said, well, the guy was a pastor in the church, so we're going to say you obstruct clergy. Then we're going to say you spoke out loud in the church, and this is a church where people jump up and say, Jesus this, Jesus that. But because you shouted at them, I'm caught charging you for causing a disturbance too. They banned me for winning 500 meters of the Malvern Place. From there, they put me in the station, took me to 42 Division. From 42 Division, they brought me down to uh, downtown to OCL. At OCL, says, Your Honor, I was the one who was assaulted. I was the one who come to call the police because these ushers assault me because of how I dress. It's that in my sense, it's a cult, and they got some sense of because of how my garments were. And then from there, the judge said, well, Mr. Clark, now is not the time. So they ship me back. So well, why don't we send to Scarborough when I spoke up? From Scarborough, I says, Your Honor, I'm asking the Crown Attorney to take responsibility and see that these charges came out of the fact that I had a criminal record and I had a peace bond on me. So the police did not take my claim of being assaulted seriously. They end up charging me because these people had status. From there, so well, where did you come from? Oh, you came from downtown? Let's send it back downtown. So he said, they said, oh no, first they put it over for two weeks for the Crown to look at it personally. Two weeks later, I said, well, Your Honor, the Crown said, oh, well, Your Honor, we got no brief. Well, let's put it back over till this day. So I started loud in the courthouse, and I was speaking out real loud. He says, well, I'll tell you what, this is a matter that has to do with a mental health issue down at 102, right? Set it back down. And I said, no, you can't do that. You cannot do that. I committed no crime. I was assaulted in the church. The police were called. When the police came, I was peaceful. I was offered a right to my mother. Next thing I know, I got all these charges drummed up. He says, security, ship him out. So security ushered me out of the court. I went back down to 102 court. Down at 102 court. The Crown Attorney says, says your man, take a look at this. You've got a pastor that says I threatened. But yet this pastor says he called me, wanted me to go outside, and I wouldn't come outside. This pastor says I'm writing names on my shirt. I had no paper. So I wrote the name of because they are badges. I wrote the name of the individual who assaulted me. And I wrote the name of those people who I saw who were the witnesses. That's where I was doing. They said, well, he wrote in red ink. So they want to make it seem like you're saying a statement that says, oh, we're going to do this or whatever. Then he says, oh, if you stop me from worship, I'm going to kill someone. I said, should you stop me from worship, you are going to have to kill me. And then the end, the pastor says, I was encouraged by officer so-and-so to write the statement. If a crime was committed against him, does anybody have to encourage you to give a statement? Huh? No, no 
even don't have to encourage you, because you're going to give a statement you were the victim of a crime. I don't have to say it's a joke. Oh, yeah, it was an accident. If you knew it was an accident, I'd probably say, yeah, it was an accident. He's got a vector went to the pool of danger. And that's basically how it ended up. And then from Scarborough, downtown, downtown to Scarborough, Scarborough downtown. Now I'm back in Scarborough. So they put it over for one week. And thank God for this lawyer. I've got his name here, Dave Burke. After I went off in the court and they think he asked the guards to remove me. I know this guy from legal aid, Dave Burke. And I said, Dave, when here's the situation, I've gone through it over 210 times. Okay? It's either you kill me or you let me live. And right now, you're killing me. I can't campaign for the mayor's post. I gotta spend all my time dealing with these court cases. I can't live my life. I am in fear every single day by the cops because they think they can do whatever they can do. We expect someone to take responsibility with So, Mr. Clark. Well, I'll do this. I'll go and I'll speak. And I said, well, I've got, I'll apply for legal assistance, Kevin. You know, I'll do you the favor. And he says, I'll speak. Well, remember, let me speak. And he went in there and he said, well, Your Honor, Mr. Clark would like this matter to go in front of a pre-trial, in front of a crown, and so on. And the judge shivered with Star Scarborough. And when I called him, I called him Friday and said I was here, I couldn't make it to court. She said, oh, there's a warrant out for your arrest. So four times he said, Scarborough, downtown. Downtown Scarborough, Scarborough, downtown. And one day I miss out of all that day. And he put a warrant, so I warned out for my arrest. But then I, I, my heart just sunk. I says, now I'm going to jail because I was sick. I could not get up. My back was gone. I could not move. Okay, for two days. And you're going to tell me I'm going to go to jail. So you can put it over back and forth, back and forth, but I can't put it over once. But with the grace of God, I do the, do the counsel said, oh, hold it. You, you have a lawyer, Dave Burke, right? I said, well, no, Dave just uh, wrote me one letter. He says, oh, he said, no, there's no warrant out for you. He said, well, the judge was in a pissed off mood that day. And he, he, he did not give anyone warrant with discretion. It means that if you miss one week, you can show up the next week. He says, yes, but he did not give no warrant with discretion. Just straight out warrant. But he was, because he was pissed off. Because he was pissed off. And if you miss a day, he's not going to have to go for it. I'm just pissed off. Just arrest him up on set, right? And they said, oh no, David sent a letter, and he did put out a warrant, a warrant with discretion. And that's how it is. Once they lay a charge on you, people, you see these people here, what are they talking about? They're not, they're, they're not dealing with individuals. Have you heard anything about the people who still have charges and stipulations on them? Have you heard anything about the 16 people who are still in jail? To fight for a freedom, for, for a freedom of what do you call it, what do you call it, our streets, or to fight for a peaceful protest, that's something that you can't fight for. And what's going to happen is it's going to dwindle and dwindle until we go down. They saw the first protest. They walked around a bunch of buckets. People gave some money. And then, bingo. So what we should demand is that we see legal fund that they assist. I bet you these 250 people, four souls, are still sitting in jail. And there's no way to assist them. And people are making money of the injustice that happens day by day. I don't give a hell about the money they make. What I care about is 250 people sitting in jail. Two and 250 people are still on charges. So they're basically in jail. But they have grounds and they have stipulations. And they're on charges. Why? Because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. I bet you you'll find probably about 10, 15 and then 20 of them. We're not even involved in jail. They were arrested. Why? They're in jail. Why? Because they're on a peace bond. They're on probation. Or they're on bail. So now their bail is being removed. And now even though they committed no crime, they can't do a crime. Right? You know?